Can HPV be treated? Did I get HPV from my partner? Um, can I get tested after having a baby? Hi guys, it's Dr. Vina. Welcome back. It's Cervical Cancer Prevention Week and as a GP, I get asked about this quite often. So together, let's debunk cervical cancer and learn about how to screen effectively. I'm not sure if you knew this, but cervical cancer is actually the fourth most common cancer globally. And in the UK, up to nine women get diagnosed with it per day and out of those two millions of their lives. So it's not something we should really take lightly at all. The screening program is designed in a way that it can catch some of these early signs and symptoms and we can treat it before it progresses to invasive cancer, which could then take lives. So the sad part about that is statistics actually show that one in three women do not attend their cervical screening. I have to be honest, I'm going to put my hand up. I have been one of those women in my 20s where I've kind of postponed it or delayed it because I've been busy with life or work. But as a GP now, seeing patients regularly who may have these symptoms or who may find results that are not always you know, what they had hoped, I'm very, very proactive in encouraging every woman I know over the age of 25 to please get screened as per your schedule. With cervical cancer, it's one of those cancers that are very slow growing. It doesn't always present with symptoms, so you may feel absolutely fine, you may not feel unwell in any way. Some of the rarer symptoms that patients may present with is bleeding in between periods, um, abnormal discharge from the vagina, bleeding after sexual intercourse, or menopausal women who may then find that they're having a bleed. If you have any of these rare symptoms, please make sure you speak to your GP so that we can investigate it a bit more. So in the UK, if you're a woman over the age of 25 and have a cervix, you will be invited for screening every three years up until the age of 50, after which you'll be invited every five years. As we said before, the whole aim of screening is so that we can catch or identify some of these changes quite early so that we can treat it in case you know it's positive. I'm going to put a video up here to show you guys exactly how smooth the process is. This video is from the NHS website and it should hopefully help answer some of your questions of what happens at these screening tests. A smooth, tube-shaped tool called a speculum will be inserted into your vagina and used to open the walls of the vagina so that your cervix can be seen. A soft brush is then inserted through the speculum to your cervix. The brush will rotate a few times to collect the sample. The brush will then be washed in a specimen pot and the pot will be sent to a lab for testing. Remember, you are in control and can stop the test whenever you want to. You can ask to lie in a different position or ask for a smaller speculum if the standard size is uncomfortable. The samples are sent to be tested for a virus called HPV. It stands for human papillomavirus and it's a family of viruses that have over 200 different types that can cause simple things like warts on your hands, in your mouth, genital warts, but 99% of cervical cancer is caused by this virus. If the test comes back positive for HPV, you will then be invited for another test called colposcopy. All this allows is a deeper investigation, a closer look at the cervix itself to see are there any changes. So you're gonna go for your cervical smear test. If positive for HPV, you'll then be invited for colposcopy. If the colposcopy is negative, you'll be back into the screening program, either every six months, one year or three years, depending on what the doctors find appropriate. But if it's negative, you go back to the routine cycle of every three years, if you're between 25 and 50, or every five years after 50. And that's pretty much all of it. I have some questions here from Instagram that some of you have asked me about cervical screening and HPV, so let's get straight into it. Can HPV be treated? So no, the virus itself cannot be treated, but some of the things it causes, like warts and cervical cancer, can be treated. So if you're infected with HPV, you have to wait for your body to clear the virus, and it could take up to two years in some cases for that to happen. Um, did I get HPV from my partner? Okay, so this is the big one. It's a tricky one. So it is transmitted via sexual intercourse, sexual contact, or even skin-to-skin -skin contact. So there is a chance you could have, but because it takes two years, if before meeting your partner, they had different partners, or they could have just carried the virus from before, so it's not 
necessarily something that we would trans we would consider as a sexually transmitted disease as per se. I'm scared about the pain of getting the screening test. So there were lots of you who mentioned about anxiety and fear and um, feeling shy or being scared. Honestly, as a doctor, I would say, would you rather overcome that fear, get a bit of courage and go through this rather than find out that you know you have some unfortunate results a few years down the line where then everything in life may come to a you know, standstill and stop. So I would just say, just build up that courage and just prepare beforehand. So if you're worried about the pain, you can take two paracetamols before the appointment itself. You can keep a hot water bag ready to kind of soothe the pelvic area afterwards to get some relief. You can apply it over the area on top of clothes for 20 minutes up to three times a day. You can also carry some panty liners or pads with you in case you get some spotting afterwards. So that's what I would say. Um, let's overcome this fear. Let's, let's build that courage and let's go get tested. Um, I am busy with work and no time. <laughs> I know how busy life can be, especially if you're working, you're doing shift work, you're, you might be super busy, absolutely. But you know, the reality is we need to prioritize our health. And this is a dialogue that needs to be louder and more clearer now more than ever, because you might be busy for this test now, but tomorrow, God forbid, we test positive for something that we don't really want there won't be work, there won't be anything. Your entire life is gonna revolve around going in and out of hospitals. So I, I pray that's not for any of us, but I would encourage you to prioritize your health and make this happen. You know, someone once said to me, even as a doctor, if tomorrow I got sick or I couldn't show up to one of my clinics, they would just replace me with another doctor. It's not something, if, if, if with work, I'm just saying this with work, we, we all make work the center of our lives, but tomorrow if you weren't there, that work would still continue. So you have to prioritize your health and make that an actual an actual goal this year. That's what I would advise you to. Um, can I get tested after having a baby? Yes, you can, but we advise three months after delivery to get tested. That's because the cervix may have gone through some changes after delivery. We advise three months post delivery to get tested um, for your smear test. Can I get tested on my period? No, we wouldn't advise that. So just if you have booked an appointment and you're about to come on your period, just call them and rebook it. That's what we'd advise. Um, in terms of a lot more questions about anxiety and fear, you can maybe take someone for a bit of moral support with you, maybe a friend, a sibling, your mum. Plan the day around it, plan something fun to do afterwards, um, go get a treat, eat something you enjoy, watch, watch a movie, relax, you know, make it about self-care, prioritize your health. And like I said before, just build the courage to go get tested. Okay, someone here has said, me and my friends have never had sex and the procedure was very uncomfortable and painful. So actually, if you've never been sexually active, you don't need to get a cervical smear test. However, because the virus can also be spread from skin to skin contact, we advise after a few years, after you're 25, about 27, 28, if you wish to get tested, you can. But if you're 24, 25, and you've never been sexually active, it's very unlikely that you would have the virus, especially if you had the jabs um, in school. I hope this video was useful in explaining a bit about cervical cancer and screening and how important it is for us to prioritize our health. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Please be mindful that we can't give specific personalized medical advice because it's just not safe to do so. You have to go to your own personal doctor to do that. We can give generic general advice that you can use for your health. I'll also leave the references down below if, in case any of you want to watch the videos or read up a bit more about the condition. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Um, see you in the next video.